seconds after the end of round four, they go to the scorecard. So here at the Cops Pavilion in Las Vegas, getting ready for David Tua versus Chris Bird, let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the brand new Cox Pavilion here at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. It is time for our featured bout of the evening, a heavyweight showdown for the right to fight for the title. It's mandatory war, and it's all brought to you by America Presents Matchmaker Thomas Brown in association with Cedric Kushner Promotions, Fight Night Inc., Sunset Station Hotel and Casino, Showtime Championship Boxing, and the undisputed king of beers, Budweiser. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, the president, Hiawatha Knight, supervisor, Darrell Peoples, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Elias Ghanem. Commissioners, Amy Ayub, Glenn Carano, Dr. Flip Pomansky, and Dr. Luther Mack, with the executive director, Mark Ratner. Physicians at ringside, Dr. Margaret Goodman, Dr. Gino Signorino, Dr. Al Capanna, and Dr. Jeff Davidson. Timekeepers at the bell, we have Jane Broadfoot and Jim Cavan. And our three judges scoring this bout, they are all from Las Vegas, Nevada. Chuck Joppa, Art Lurie, and Paul Smith. And the third man of the ring, our referee in charge of this bout, Jay Nady. All right, fans, here we go. The time has come for our main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Heavyweight Championship elimination. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Las Vegas, it's showtime. Introducing to you first, ladies and gentlemen, on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with white trim, hailing from Flint, Michigan. He weighed in at 214 pounds. With a record of 33 wins, two losses, he has 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Currently ranked the IBF number two contender. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former WBO heavyweight champion of the world, introducing Chris Bird. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trunks with white trim, joining us all the way from South Auckland, New Zealand. He weighed in at a ready 233 pounds. His hard-hitting record stands at 38 wins, two losses, 33 wins coming by way of knockout. He is currently ranked the IBF number one contender. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the explosive IBF intercontinental heavyweight champion known as the Tua Man. Introducing David Tua. Once again, a referee in charge, Jay Nady, now to give instructions. Do you have any questions? This is 12 rounds. Please obey my commands. Let's test the and go to work. Well, as Ron Borges of the Boston Globe put it, Bird can run, but he can't fly. Can Chris Bird escape the brutal power of David Tua? How will he react if Tua connects? Can Tua combine his power with the speed he exhibited earlier in his career? Can he cut off the ring and land his punches? Some of the questions going in to this fight. You can see just by the body on David Tua, there have been some major changes. He's down to a cut, 233. Bird would not look Tua in the eye during the pre-fight introductions and the instructions by referee Jay Nady. Here we go. Round one scheduled for 12. IBF heavyweight elimination bout. Now, even though Tua is the bigger puncher by far, I still think he should not be looking for one big shot. Well, he got a good left hook there to the jaw, did Tua. Coming off as the third punch of the three-punch combination. The third one landed clean.
Burr told us he did not think Tua would rush straight in and try to take his head off. That there would be some semblance of a feeling out process, but it looks like Tua wants to go right at it. Don't grab him. Don't grab him that left. You also have to understand, too, the mindset of Tua. Tua right now feels there's no way Burr can hurt him. If you have someone that can't hurt you, you have nothing to fear. That is huge. Will Tua's improved fitness translate into performance in the ring? There's a heavy left hand of the body. Bird's got to start landing some of his own combinations as well. He can't just run and hide. Use that flicking defensive jab. He's got to stab it in there, get some points with it, and throw the left hand. Tua continues to be the stalker. Tua flat-footed, Bird on his toes, but Bird absorbing a lot to the body. Tua with the always unusual hairdo, missing with that swiping left, left-right combination, but soft punches by Bird, no effect. No effect in as far as they didn't hurt Tua, but they are points. And it's going to become a very big issue when it comes down to big power shots and those light punches. Toa with the one punch knockout power. But as he found out, can't always rely on that if things aren't going his way. Don't stop. Don't, stop. don't grab him and don't hit him low. Heard gets a left hand in. Tua continues to go to the body. Bird, the master of escapology. And he's very difficult to hit cleanly to the chin. Took Ike Bucci five rounds, but when he caught him, it was a brutal shot. Tua's maybe going to have to concentrate on the body for a few rounds to see if he can slow Bird down. Final seconds of the opening round. And a better first round for Tua as opposed to Burr. You won that round because you landed the only hard shots. What does it tell? You landed the only hard and good shots there. And I need a little grease, too. Don't blow your nose. Sit back and relax. Don't be aggressive. Don't let him out on this side, okay? you got to step over there a little bit. You see each time he turns and gets out, it's on your left side, right? So don't lean so far over here when you ain't here and ready to hit that body. Stay with the body. Okay. Don't don't sit there and play that chess with me. Take him around. Just take him around. Keep your hands high. Yep. Hey, this is your show, baby. This is your show. Okay. A little more water. Get a little more water. I want to keep hydrated. Just a couple of Joes. Joe Bird, the father of Chris Bird and, and Joe Goosen, the, the trainer in the corner of uh, David Tua. It is a family affair with uh, Joe's wife Rose as well in there, Chris's mom in the corner. He's also got several of his brothers in there helping as well. Round two, Tua taking round one, as you can hear Joe Goosen tell him. Tua spent a lot of time in training, practicing, stepping to the side and turning, because he knows the bird can spin out on either side. What he was practicing was turning and firing, turning and firing. This is what Goosen was talking about in the corner. When he turns out, turn and fire with him. He does look quicker than we've seen the last couple of fights against Donnell Nicholson and Lewis. Bird shakes his head, says, you didn't hurt me. It was just a stumble. Some opponents call Bird style obnoxious. Awkward, unorthodox, elusive. I'll tell you myself, Steve, I, I look at him and I watch him, and if, if my style were to fight him, he would frustrate me, he would frustrate a lot of fighters, because nothing is orthodox, nothing is traditional, and it is sometimes tough to catch that timing. But it's Tua who continues to pressure the 100% boxer, Chris Bird, who pecks with the jab and slides away. Little pity pat punches. Looks for the openings to step in and score with sharp, accurate combinations. Not a power hitter whatsoever. In fact, in baseball parlance, he might be called a punch and Judy hitter as opposed to the home run hitter of Tua. Now, 
Now, there was a nice straight lead left hand by Berg. This is what he needs to do more of. Get to it, get to his head up in here, and just keep the pity pad in there. Tap, tap, tap. He just tries to frustrate you. Take you out of your game plan. Again, to it to the body. That's good body work now. He needs to come. He has to come up the middle. To his big punch. Over the years, the explosive left hook. Looking to come back more with the right hand. There's a, a right-left combination to the midsection by David Tua. And I think with David Tua, he does both shots stay downstairs. He needs to take one or two up top, the uppercut and the hook. See how effective that might be. Open Bird's defense up a little bit. Bird's been down four times in his career. Two times against Vladimir Klitschko, two against Ike Bayabuchi. They both lost to Ibeabuchi. And both beat Jeff Wooden. Those are their only two common opponents. Wooden's the southpaw, by the way. Combination to the body by Tua. See, I think it's important here, Steve, and especially in the early rounds, that Bird has to put a little more punishment back on Tua and not let him be so brave and walk in there unscathed. Like that. Maybe he heard me. Maybe his best offering of the fight. We had that whole round. The guy got one little thing and you slipped it. I know that probably looked good to the judges. That last left hand, you know what I'm talking about? You slipped right there. I need you to whip back off those slips, okay? You still got to edge more over to your left side. You know what I'm telling you? You still got to, you can't let him out that side. That's the way he wants to go. Force him to your right more. Force him to your right, okay? And then start using your right hand more. Straight right hand. Start taking the lead with this guy. You know, hard feints. You got to start taking the lead a little bit more. Get it a little bit closer. All right? You're scoring. Watch Bird. There's that lead left hand just stuffing it in the face of Tua, not letting Tua just walk in unharmed. Got to put something in his face. They're not hard punches, but they have to be there. And at the end of the round, I think he heard me because he did it again right before the end of the round. Nice little jab, hold him off, and again, the left hand. He's got to land more leather onto his face. He's going to have to leave the, ri the, Jay leave Nady the ring on the whistle. Telling Joe Gushin and Start company to now, leave the ring on the whistle. A little tardy in the two a corner. The feeling is Bird has to win for 36 minutes for Tua. It's a one-second fight, essentially. Tua, dangerous every second for 12 rounds. Bird looking to aggravate Tua for 12 rounds if he can. He doesn't care if he hears the boos. A couple of the punches, J-80 said, were on the hip, which is not legal. One's below the belt. So far, Bird has managed to stay off the ropes. There's that escapology once again by Bird. Very slippery and elusive. He can't worry about Tua's left hook, he told us, or he may get nailed by something else that Tua's been working on. They saw a reasonable combination by Bird and Tua not respond back. What he needs to do after Tua stops is hit Tua. Make him take some punishment back. Tua with those heavy punches. Some of those were blocked by Bird. But they have to wear you down. The angles by Bird. Continues to peck away with the right. And a left, straight left to the head by Bird. Partially blocked, but now he came back with another three-punch combination, some of which got through. That's how Bird needs to do it. Peck, hit, and move. Peck, hit, and move. Bang, bang, bang. Get three or four quick shots and move. Bird fighting smartly. There's a straight left that landed by Bird. Now he pecks away with the right. That's adding to the nuisance, Steve. That's how he aggravates you. Stop, you you blink, you hesitate, and you get hit. Time! Let's stand up for a second. You can't hit him with your hand open, okay? You can hope him to catch it, but you can't hit him with your hand open, okay? You gotta close your fist. And if the back, if you turn your back, it's okay to hit you there. Time in, box. Did you think he was doing that a lot? Well, what happens sometimes is punchers, they, 
that should be boxers that use their hands to pick up punches. They open their hand so they can pick the punch and move it to the side. But before they get their hand closed, they smack with an open hand. That's technically illegal. Tua jumps on Bird. And a straight left hand returned by Bird. Bird did a nice job of blocking most of those punches, but the pressure and the power is going to eventually add up. There will be a cumulative effect. Comes around to seven, eight, nine. Should we get that far? Tua, who's never been down in his pro career and doesn't intend to go that direction tonight against the light hitting Bird. So he can afford to be courageous. Bouncing bullets off the body of Bird. Run your speed off and turn it. David Tua going to the body, one of his best assets. He digs underneath. And you see that left hook to the side. The referee said, if you turn your back, that's illegal. Still very hard to get clean shots at Chris Bird. You watch Bird use his speed to shoot some punches down the middle right there. One, two, three, not real hard. Crisp, clean, they landed their points. But he needs to do a lot more of that if he's going to beat off the tour man. Take a look, too, at that open hand where he smacks and slaps. Not a good thing. Illegal also. Round number four. Tua coming off a training camp that was like a boot camp, he told us. What do you think thus far of his hand speed and his foot speed? I think his hand speed is better. I think his foot speed is shown to be a little better, and he's throwing more punches, which are all the things he needs to do. He's not quite back to the tour that knocked out John Ruiz, though. In 19 seconds, Keep no hand That's the tape that Chris Bird watched to prepare himself for David Tua, among others. But he emphasized the earlier Tua, the real dangerous Tua. Chris Bird's dad had told him to turn to more, which is good advice, but what he also has to do is hit him more while he's turning, keep him more balanced. Again, back away with those punches. Tua taking Bird into the corner, but Bird able to sidestep trouble. Straight left hand, another, a left cross by Bird that landed. Again, not hard punches, but scoring points. And frustrating David Tua. Watch your head. Part of his game plan. Bird scoring. Having a good round. He's landed some of his cleaner punches in this round. David Tua getting a little frustrated. You can see in his face. And Bird avoiding the hits. Turning to him more, turning him, listening to his dad, keeping him more balanced, making him shift directions. That's one of Bird's biggest assets. Tua. Still somewhat reluctant Stop. to unleash the right. Please. Watch your forehead. The always humble and easygoing Bird said he had prepared to be hit and hit hard by Tua, but he will not quit no matter what. Often overlooked and underestimated. There's a good straight left hand by Bird. It's sent to a back. But to a back with a big left hook to the head. I'll tell you what, Bird turned his hands down and walked right in there, left hook. But firing back. Bird recovers well. Tua has not been able to get Bird on the ropes. by Jane 80 one of the premier referees. Good round for Chris Bird. Uh -huh. 
Now, again, all right, great round, nice left hook at the end. I need three minutes. If we're going to win this fight, we can't leave any doubt, can we? Okay? We can't leave any doubt at all. You've got to work harder. It's the fifth round. You've got to work harder than you're working right now. Take a couple deep breaths. Here we go. If you need to give me a drink of water. Yeah, we're going to see David too. He's chasing Chris Bird back to the ropes this way. But what he doesn't do, he doesn't cut off the ring here or here. And what Bird will do is just spin right out and he gets away with it. Tua comes straight in again, straight in, doesn't step and cut off the ring, doesn't use the hooks on the outside. The first, and Bird just steps right out. They, Tua doesn't want to do that. He wants to cut that ring off. Have the left foot one way, right foot the other, and hooks or right hands to guard up top. I think now as we enter round five, Joe Who's Goosen is concerned that? with Tua's focus and concentration, which can tend to wane from time to time, which has been part of his problem. I think the last round was the most effective round for Bird. I gave him that round. I thought he was the more effective. Landed more punches. Most of the big stuff was blocked, and he was able to do what we just illustrated, spin out at will. But as you know, Tua can be dangerous, and in a split second, turn the fight around. Yes, you could ask guys like Rockman who was ahead, or like Moscow who were ahead, and 10 seconds later they were sleeping. He has one punch knockout power, legitimate power. Tua with a victory over Hasi Rockman back in 98. Good work here by Bird. A series of rights and lefts to the head of Tua. It's something we talk about is kind of a gym term. Walk a man down. Sometimes with a guy so fast as Bird, you can't slip his punches. You just got to put your hands up, stuff his punches, and break them down. Bird continues to fight a very intelligent fight. That was long, David. Let's take a look at the uh, press row scoring. Graham Houston has it even. Kevin Ioli and Fiona Manning have Bird ahead. I'll tell you, Steve, I thought the first two rounds, two were more effective. The last two, it looked like Bird was. Chris Bird really coming on the last couple of rounds. And now David Tua bouncing back with thumping punches to the body. Getting a little aggravated and not necessarily desperate, but anxious. Another caution from Jay Nady. Low blows by Tua. That's the second or third time he's warned him. So he could be close to losing a point. Nothing low, nothing low. Let go, let go, Chris. While Tua had Bird in, that, in the corner there against the ropes, he had his arms to the outside and his feet able to step and move off so Bird couldn't escape so easily. Always on the inside, he's going to be the winner. Too big, too strong. So, wisely, Bird looks to stay on the outside. But Tua closing the gap and forcing a brawl. Big finish by the Tua man. Nope, not at all. You're fighting this mob, but don't let them roast too long. No. You're giving up 20 pounds. You can't let them roast. Keep wow. this under the rain. I'll get the water. I can't get the water. Keep this under the rain. Give me this. Get a good win. Go up now. This is where we wear this guy down. This is why we did the training we did, Dave. You have to get in his ass and stay there. You understand? You got the mouthpiece ready to go? Hold on. A lot more head movement, but I need you to get inside, Dave. Stay in there. Yes. Thank you. As we begin round six, scheduled for 12, IBF heavyweight eliminator. 
If Tua loses a point on fouls, it really could come back to haunt him. Although, he can be very dangerous in the later rounds. See, in the later rounds, too, it's also it's easier to throw a lot of lighter punches, which is the style of Bird. Tua still loads up, takes a lot more energy, and attrition factor could become a big thing. Straight left hand to the head by Bird. Bird measuring him out with the right, flicking the left. And frustrating to him. For what you've seen so far, is Tua at least more dimensional, less one-dimensional than in the past. He's less one-dimensional. He's moving him more quickly. I think he's spending too much time bobbing and weaving because against a guy like this, it's hard to bob and weave. A lot of energy. Against a Lennox Lewis, his combinations and punches back are still going to have to be a little quicker because he has to close the distance of that long range. And there's also much more power for Lewis, so better but not great. That was a that low was blow low. by Tua. That was low. No more low blows. Okay, you understand that? No more. Well, he's okay. going to probably take a point away the next time, but he's giving Tua a lot of leeway. That's about the third or fourth time he's warned him about low blows. Well, I'll tell you what, that one was very close to being the borderline with the belt involved, but it appears shade low. Oh, oh, Heavy shots there to the ribs of the body by Tua. And the pesky Chris Bird doing his thing, creating a smile from the Tua man. Something we also have to take into consideration. A lot of people lose sight of it. Big power shots count more than little tap tap jabs. So it's not just a numbers no, game, but no, which punches landed and which did not. Don't hit him low, David. Bird pecking away with the right hand. To a try. To be patient. And again, Bird stepped out to it, did not step left and cut off the ring with his upper body hook or his legs. The corner told Bird to stay off the ropes. He's given up about 20 nothing pounds. Low, nothing low. So far, he's been doing that pretty well. But every once in a while, he gets trapped. But he's also been using the ropes for a brace, for a little strength to use his rest and fight off him and let Tua do the work. Fighting very smart off the ropes, this Chris Bird. Bird pacing himself nicely. Tua missing with that left hook. Just before the bell. All right, now look. Take that. Here, you want to take that right here? A lot better, Dave, but you still, you still cannot wait. This is, what is this coming up right here, seven? This is seven. Half this is seven. This okay, is here we go. Half. Come on. Here we go. Take a couple deep breaths. I know you're warm. I know you're warm. Okay? This is going to be five guys at night. Okay, now, Dave. We're going to take a look at some action south of the border. Yeah, see, now that's on the belt line. That's that's a border. That's still a fair shot. That was on right on the B and Bird. A master of defense who watched the spin move by Chris Bird. Keeps that jab in his face, steps around him, spins him all the way around, full pirouette, and out. Gets a little smile from the tour man. Joe Goose and a little more pleased in that uh, two up corner, saying that's a little better. Well, the first third of the round, he came out and really dominated on Fort Will. He started getting tagged in the last third of the round. Tua goes right to it. Unofficial scores at the half. Unofficial score at the half for me. I have it uh, pretty much tied up. I have it exactly the same. 57, 57. Bobby Chez has it even through six. The judges all from Las Vegas, Chuck Chiapa, Mark Lurie, and Paul Smith. Let go, Chris. And again, if Tua commits a, a foul, a low blow again, it could really be trouble. In such a close fight. And some of the things that are difficult to keep in mind, the first, they like said, the first third of the round was almost all David Tua. In the last fight, in the last round, and the last part of that round, 
a lot burst, so you have to balance them out, keeping your mind and work production early and late. Sometimes those close rounds can be huge. A riveting right hand. Better right hand than we used to see from David Tua. David Tua, we finally see the right now. A countering left hand of the head by Bird. Tua continues to be the, the man coming forward. So now we're halfway through this round, in round seven, and most of this early work has been Tua. Now let's see what happens toward the end. And let's see if we see more of that right hand by Tua, which scored effectively moments ago. There's the right again off the noggin of Bird. Bird comes back with some pitter patter punches. Bird is scoring. They're not heavy punches, obviously, but you just don't know what the judges are thinking. And two was for the first minute and a half. Right now the answer is no. But there's a nice ebb and flow. What Bird seems to be doing is letting Tua shoot his energy load early in the round and come back late in the round. And like look this. at this display by Bird. A beautiful flurry by Chris Bird. Seems to be a smart strategy. And it looks like Tua is sucking some wind right now. Well, that's how Chris Bird may intend to steal some rounds that are close and not even his. The man who had an Ivan Drago-type training camp, David Tua, breathing heavily. Big finish for Bird. Ain't enough. Got it. Got it. It was good. It was good, but I need more, okay? Okay. Get back. Okay. There you go. Take some deep breaths. Give me that towel. Towel. Give me that towel. You coming right here? Uh huh. Yep. Get to it right now. You can't let him turn you ever again. You cannot let him turn you outside again. You know what I'm saying, Dave? Don't let him turn you. If you keep him inside your arms right here, he, he can't do anything. He's just trying to score a couple of points here and there. He's not doing anything except moving and throwing a couple of shots. Don't even give him those, man. You're really out working. You're making the fight happen, but you've got to make it happen more. They got to see you. They got to see you perform, not him. Do you understand me? All right. Little frustration of the voice of trainer Joe Goosen. I'll tell you what, though. Good advice. Not let him. Not let him spin him and pity pat him. Let him off, stuff him on the inside. He can't deal with that strength, power, and weight. As we enter. Changes. Two has got his hands way down, smiling at Bird, as if to say, You can't hurt me. The crowd really into the action now, as Bird looks to turn it around. And what we have to find out now, too, is are David Two's big, thick, muscular arms tired? If they are, he's got problems. They're very low. Good body shot by Bird. Tua looking a little shaky right here. Continues to score at will. David to his arms are tired. I'm convinced that there is some fatigue in the shoulder. The heavy-handed Tua has heavy arms right now, and it looks like he can't lift them. I started well, I to done. say towards the end of the last round that Tua started to look weary. And he is 
is really sucking air. David Tua. A simple thing for David Tua to do now, although one of so simple while tired, is come in behind that Mike Tyson like straight rip jab. Use that to work his way in. Don't just walk in trying to duck and dodge the bullets coming from Bird. Again, Bird very effective with the right hand. Not much defense being put up by Tua. Beautiful jab by Bird. Another good round for Chris Bird. That right hand was blocked by Bird. Nine, 10, 11, and 12. We got four rounds of four rounds. It's non stop punching. Somebody's got to do or die in here now. And it's got to be you. Do you understand? All right, Dave? Let this guy walk away with this here. He had one good round. That's it. I want you to come back. Speed, speed neutralizing the power. Quick punches, keeping two hands in his face, keeping him occupied. And Bird defensively getting out of the way before Tua can fire back. You know, one of the keys we talked about offensive and defensive speed. A very confident Chris Bird, a sense of urgency now beginning to formulate in the David Tua corner. You can hear it, the anxiety in the voice of trainer Joe Goosen. He said, it's do or die with four more rounds. You got to do something, David. Well, I think what he saw is the same thing that we saw and sensed that maybe his man's tiring a little. Toward the end of the fight, that is really, really awful. Especially for a puncher who relies on not accumulation, but one-shot power. Manager Kevin Barry investing a lot of money in the best fitness and conditioning experts money can buy for David Tua. He's got to be concerned right now. Fans screaming that Tua low blow bird again. Well, even with all due fairness, the first one was on the belt. We saw that. I didn't get to see that one. Bad angle for my vision. A bird looking very sharp right here. Tua struggling. Beautiful left right combination by Bird. Graham Houston from British Boxing Monthly. Kevin Ioli, Las Vegas Review Journal. Fiona Manning, MaxBoxing.com. The scores speak for themselves. Yeah, we you know even after looking at the score, scores, I gotta tell you, years ago it was a a pretty famous fighter by the name of Muhammad Ali who used to do a thing called the shoe shine. A lot of quick stuff that didn't really amount to much and stole around with it. And Chris Bird has mastered some of that as well. The underdog, Chris Bird, appears to be ahead of the fight. You just never know how the official judges are going to call it. Cannot slip those punches, not just because they're quick, or not, even though they don't hurt, but they're also too many. Two is tired, and he's a big, thick man. Hard to slip those punches. What he's got to do is stuff them, block, and fire back. The crowd chanting in unison, Bird. They have gotten behind Chris Bird. Bird in the corner, pressed up Put against the ropes. His father, Joe Bird, doesn't want him there. He's fighting well off the ropes, though. He really is. And now he nods to the crowd. His wife, Tracy, 
loving it. And his son, Justin, by her side. Take us inside the ropes, break it down. Well, Bird is doing what he had to do, being defensively smart, moving, stepping off, not getting hit clean. The pity pad is abusing. Numbers and numbers. He's outboxing David Tua, using his speed and defensive movement, frustrating the man, all part of his keys. He's got a very awkward style, and here he keeps showing you all the different angles, things that we're not used to, Orthodox fighters, and I'll tell you, he's being very effective, especially late in each round. Ted, scheduled for 12, IBF heavyweight elimination bout, David Tua in the blue trunks, Chris Bird in the black. Bird has been doing a tremendous job in controlling most of the action, in confusing David Tua throughout. Tua trying to end it on one bomb, but Bird sticking to his elusiveness, his and, angles, his boxing, and his And as his last style. three or four rounds have unfolded, we see a pattern. Two are tired, comes out early, a little strong after his minute rest. Pushes Bird to the corner, gets some shots in, most blocked by Bird. Then Bird taunts him with the jab. Pity pat left hands until we get late, minute and a half, two minutes into the round. Then he starts throwing his left hands with good combinations, taking to it out of winning the round. And again, the slippery Bird sliding along the ropes. Taking this exchange as well. To a leaning on Bird, but Bird, who obviously looks the fresher of the two, continues to score. In fact, Bird is hardly sweating. Oh, he's sweating, and there is some fatigue, but it's a different kind of fatigue. He's had to deal with a lot of weight and a lot of strength, but David Tua. So Barty said it best, fatigue makes cowards of us all. When you can't do something, even though you know you're capable, but you're just not in condition for it, it's absolutely frightening. But Tua going through that extensive boot camp. They seem to get the weight off, but they didn't get the condition factor up. The Bird key differences. Seems to be in better shape. Condition, right. Under a minute, round 10. Again, that straight right hand getting into the head of Tua. Bird continues to pile up the points. Oh, a big right hand by Tua. It didn't seem to face Bird. It's the best punch he's landed in probably four rounds, but it was just one and done. And Bird came right back, Bobby. There's a straight left hand. Down the middle. Bird whips a right around to the head of Tua. So after that big right hand by Tua, it's been all Bird. Bird has been undaunted by Tua. You see, now there's a little bit of a role reversal. Although Tua still has one punch knockout power, he's not punching like he can hurt anybody. Watching a terrific fight, a completely confident Chris Bird all over Tua. A frustrated Tua whacks him after the bell. style out fighting the Tua man. Tua is also tired, so his head is snapping back much more readily. Those soft punches now seem harder, and he is frustrating Tua to death. You can see David Tua putting his hands down, just missing punches and absolutely upset. Look, frustration, frustration. That's exactly what that is. 
We've reached the championship rounds, round 11. Bird hardly even breathing hard in his corner. Tua looking exhausted. And Bird just goes back to his elusive boxing style. Uh, sort of underselling himself in our fighter meetings to us. We know it. A, if, I, if we lose, uh, move down to cruiserweight, stuff like that. One of the things I was very impressed with, even though he was losing almost every round, when caught Klitschko, he was walking him down until they eventually stopped it and awarded him the fight. He has the guts, he has the courage, he just doesn't have the real size, and that is sometimes a factor. You heard his dad in the corner say, listen, you can only take one minute, one split second of missing an opportunity, and you can get hurt. began as pure puncher versus pure boxer could end in pure hell for David Tua if he loses this fight. He's simply being outworked and outsmarted. trying to get out of harm's way, gets hold of left, hold of a good left hook, but fights his way off the ropes and does a little dance and shows us that he's uh, good. He's happy. Got it. Three minutes of your life. Come on. Now, I'm going to tell you, Dave, Dave, this is it right here. Do you trust me? I'm going to tell you, you need this round. Do you hear me? He not only needs the round, he may need a knockout. Well, I'll tell you what, I have a lot closer than press row scoring. But I do believe he's in uh, the dangerous area of the point of no return already, yes. A crowd of close to 3,000, close to capacity. Really enjoying the action here at the Cox Pavilion in Las Vegas. David Tua in trouble. Chris Bird continues to peck away and stay away from the bigger two. Can Tua close the show in dramatic fashion? I don't think he has the energy, Steve. I'm, what I'm watching is frustration. He's looking for the perfect punch, and guess what? The more he keeps looking, the more he keeps eating leather. Not heavy leather, but leather. Oh, beautiful 
move by Bird to elude that right hand by Tua. Bird continues to spin away from Tua. That was a desperation right hand to again looking for that perfect punch. Now getting the hug from Chris Bird. You know, I hate you know you're gonna hate to hear this, Steve, but this fight is not as far off from a draw as you might think. A couple of those rounds were very close. Did you like the the body punches and the power punches or the pity pads? I don't I think that some of the press row were a little far out there for Bird. I didn't have my head as, as much as that. Although I do think he, I think he snuck it out in rounds eight, nine, and ten. I think those are the three key rounds for Bird. Very emotional scene right here. Chris Bird's wife Tracy with the tears. Camp, it's for you. David say it's for you. I think many of joy. I want that Trinity that's praying for me. This is for y'all. All people that praying for Mikado. You know I'm there. Well, Bobby, in uh, response to your statement, nothing would surprise me. Nothing here in Las Vegas. A very anxious David Tua standing by for the scores. Here we're going to take a look at Tua. Now, on the inside, Tua had been throwing nice, sharp shots in here, shots in here. Watch his wild right hand. It comes this way. And Bird. Ducks out of the way of it and counters back, even though it's not real effective. But well, watch this big right hand. This is a home run ball. This is what we call a desperation punch. To it looks for the big one right there. Misses Bird out of the way. Again, hard to hit clean with big shots. You've got to work combinations to beat Chris Bird. Bird fought such an intelligent fight, and it could be once again back to the proverbial drawing board for David Tua after this one. Yeah, you see what kind of bus is here. And gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Paul Smith scores about 115 to 113. 
Judges Art Lurie and Chuck Jumpa both score the bout 116 to 112. All three in favor of the winner. And now the mandatory challenger for the IBF heavyweight crown, Chris Burke. did that until I won my first world title and I cried. So I, I can sympathize and empathize with that wonderful situation. So it's Chris Bird who awaits the winner of Rockmon Lewis, scheduled for November 17th. His wife, Tracy, ecstatic. You have no idea. It is Bird who's guaranteed a shot at the IBF belt. Let's waste no time. Get it up to Jim Gray. Jim. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. Chris, congratulations. Was that a perfect fight? It was a perfect fight. First, I want to say one thing. This was dedicated to Dr. Camp, who just passed away. His last words was, go get him. I went and got him. Can you explain to our audience who that is? Uh, he was a, uh, Dr. Camp was a good, close friend of my preacher and very close friend of mine. He just passed away of uh, Parkinson's. We pray for the family. We love him. Dave Sage also. Chris, very few people tonight gave you a chance coming into this, and, and you kind of even downplayed your chances to us yesterday when you said, you know, if I lose, I'll just be a good cruiserweight and continue there. Was that just the possum? Yeah, that was. That was. Get people wondering, especially Max and Kenny on ESPN2. Yeah, I know. I ain't no, going on the... I'm not I'm cruiserweight. I ain't going on the cruiserweight. Why were you so effective, and why do you feel that you were able to keep David Tua from ever connecting on a big punch? Uh, just my boxing ability. Um, I'm, I'm very hard to train for. I got a very awkward style. I'm a southpaw, and I'm very tough. He hit me with some great punches in the ring. I took him and kept going. He hit me with some good body shots, good head shots, but I'm very tough. I'm very competitive, like I said, in meeting, and uh, I wanted it real bad. It seemed as though you were very tactical. It, really, none of your shots, it seemed, Chris, hurt him, but, but you were able to keep peppering him constantly with the jab oh, yeah. and, and keeping him away. Oh, yeah, jab, jab. I was getting it, but that body shot, watch out for it. Better cancel Christmas. Your Tim father, you were an overwhelming favorite, and, and everybody kind of thought that this was an afterthought, uh, afterthought fight for you, and you would prepare for the winner of uh, uh, Rockman and Lewis. Well, I thought I did enough to win the fight, but first of all, uh, I thank God uh, nobody was seriously hurt, and, uh, you know, I congratulate... Uh, Chris for uh, you know uh, being a tough warrior but uh, you know I thought I um, I did enough to win the fight and I thought if I wasn't pressuring there'd be no fight but you know if you weren't what if I wasn't coming forward and pressuring and making you know throwing punches there'll be no fight but um, no, you no, know he was making the fight the whole night but he was very effective at keeping you at bay and and you never really seemed to get off the big punch well you know uh, I think I was landing uh, the clear blows and the heavy blows in the ring and uh, you know I guess uh, they were looking at uh, a different scoring tonight. David, uh, it, much like the Lewis fight, it, it appeared to Steve and Bobby calling a fight and a lot of the observers that you were reluctant to throw the right hand again. Was the shoulder bothering you? Was there something wrong? No, nah, I was well prepared. I can't thank enough um, to, the, to the team tour for preparing me for this fight. Um, I came prepared for this fight and I can't take nothing away from Chris, but you know, I thought I did enough to win the fight, but you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Did you lose too much, uh, too much weight? <laughs> I mean, you, you're down 14 pounds from your last fight. Was that too much too soon? No, I, I, um, I came out tonight and no excuses. I, um, I gave it my best, and uh, I guess they saw another fight and uh, another scoring for me tonight. So, But I'm happy. What will you do next? Well, I'm just going to have to go back to the drawing board and uh, come back better. David, it seems as though these elusive fighters give you problems. Uh, 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 what can you learn about these elusive fighters, Lennox Lewis and, and, and now Chris Bird? <laughs> Well, tonight I thought, um, you know, if you know you had that um, right jab of his uh, keeping me at bay, but still I was able to, to get in the, the cleaner punches and the puncher that scored the, score the, the, the point.